Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Obama administration announced Sunday citizens of 14 countries will be subjected to intense screening at airports worldwide, including full-body pat-down and physical inspection of property. The list of countries targeted are Afghanistan, Algeria, Cuba, Lebanon, Libya, Iraq, Iran, Nigeria, North Korea, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Syria and Yemen. All passengers flying from these countries will also face increased inspection. Nawar Shora of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee criticized the new rules. He said, quote, this is extreme and very dangerous. All of a sudden, people are labeled as being related to terrorism just because of the nation they're from. Some advocates of racial profiling have suggested even more extreme measures. Retired Air Force General Tom McKernany appeared on Fox News. We have got to go to very, very strict screening, and we have to use profiling. And I mean be very serious and harsh about the profiling. If you are an 18 to 28-year-old Muslim man, then you should be strip searched. And if we don't do that, there's a very high probability we're going to lose an airline. A federal judge in Washington, D.C., has thrown out all charges against the five Blackwater operatives involved in the 2007 Nisor Square massacre that killed 17 Iraqi civilians. Judge Ricardo Urbina handed down his ruling late in the afternoon, New Year's Eve. Urbina accused the Justice Department of building its case on sworn statements that the guards had given under a promise of immunity. The decision was met by outrage in Iraq. Iraqi government spokesperson Ali al-Dabah said Iraq would support a civil lawsuit filed in U.S. courts by victims of the shooting. The government is not part of this case, but the victims and the families of the victims who were wounded and harmed are the ones who will file this case. The government will facilitate the lawsuit from Iraqi citizens to sue the guards and the company for the damage they caused and for committing this crime. In other Blackwater news, CNN is reporting two contractors from the company were among the seven Americans killed Wednesday in a suicide bombing at a CIA base in Afghanistan. A captain in the Jordanian intelligence service was also killed in the blast. Since the September 11th attacks, the CIA has worked closely with the Jordanian spy agency, the General Intelligence Department. France and Japan have joined the United States and Britain in closing their embassies in Yemen, following reported threats from al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. The U.S. embassy was closed Sunday, one day after U.S. General David Petraeus traveled to Yemen to meet with the president there, Ali Abdullah Saleh, to discuss strengthening military ties. Over the weekend, President Obama linked al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula to the failed Christmas Day airline bombing. The U.S. and Britain have also announced plans to fund a special counterterrorism police unit in Yemen. On Sunday, when asked whether more U.S. military action was possible in Yemen, President Obama's deputy national security adviser, John Brennan, said that was a possibility. Carried an attack in Sana'a, the capital of Yemen. Uh, I spoke with our ambassador down there, Ambassador Sesh, this morning as well as last night. Both the U.S. and the British embassies have been closed uh, to give the Yemeni government an opportunity to thwart that threat and the plans that are afoot right now. We'll have more on Yemen after headlines. Afghan President Hamid Karzai has been dealt a setback after the Afghan parliament rejected two-thirds of his proposed cabinet picks, including his nominees to head the defense, interior and finance departments. Analysts said the vote offered clear evidence of Karzai's eroding political support in the wake of last year's disputed election. Harun Mir, director of Afghanistan's Center for Research and Policy, said Afghanistan remains in political crisis. Only those ministers who had the backing of the international community were able to win enough confidence vote. And it means that those who did not have the support of the international community were unable. So there is, in some ways, an invisible hand in the Afghan parliament that is trying to influence the outcome. In other news from Afghanistan, hundreds of people, mostly students, protested in Kabul and in the province of Nagarhar earlier today against the U.S. killing of civilians. Another protest against civilian deaths was held on December 30th. Over the past 10 days, Afghan civilians have been killed in a number of attacks. Four civilians were killed during an operation of NATO forces in Baglan. Eleven Afghans, including eight schoolchildren, were killed in eastern Kunar and 13 
13 more Afghans died in an air raid in Lagman province. The killing of the school children has sparked the most outrage. According to The Times of London, U.S.-led troops dragged innocent children from their beds and shot them during a night raid on December 27th. Afghan government investigators said eight school children were killed, all but one of them from the same family. The headmaster of the local school said seven of the children were handcuffed and then executed. A preliminary investigation by the United Nations determined students were killed in the raid. Kai Edi, who heads the United Nations in Kabul, said the U.N. remained concerned about nighttime raids by coalition troops, given that they often result in lethal outcomes for civilians. In Pakistan, the death toll from a suicide bombing at a volleyball match Friday has risen to 101. It was one of the deadliest attacks in Pakistan in recent years. The Washington Post reports the past decade was the worst for the U.S. economy in modern times. There's been zero net job creation since December 1999. No previous decade going back to the 1940s had job growth of less than 20 percent. Middle-income households made less in 2008, when adjusted for inflation, than they did in 1999. And the net worth of American households has also declined when adjusted for inflation. This compares with sharp gains in every previous decade since data were initially collected in the 1950s. Wall Street also registered its first-ever negative decade on a total return basis. Sam Stavall is chief investment strategist at Standard & Poor's Equity Research. He said the benchmark S&P 500 is down about 10 percent over the last 10 years. Dismal decade, because whether you go back to 1900, this is the first decade in which the S&P 500 lost money when you include dividends reinvested. Even in the 1930s, we were able to eke out a 10 percent total return because we had dividend yields that ranged anywhere from 5 to 10 percent during that 10-year period. In other economic news, The New York Times reports about 6 million Americans receiving food stamps report they have no other income. About 1 in 50 Americans now live in a household with a reported income that consists of nothing but a food stamp card. In news from Latin America, Peru's Supreme Court has upheld a 25-year jail sentence handed to Alberto Fujimori, Peru's former president. Fujimori was convicted of directing the killings of 25 people and overseeing a death squad as part of a dirty war in the early 90s. Fujimori is said to be the first democratically elected Latin American leader to be found guilty of human rights abuses in his own country. Gisela Ortiz Perea praised the court's ruling. In 1992, her brother was kidnapped and assassinated by a pro-government and death squad. Celebrar esta sentencia que culmina un largo camino de cerca de 18 años de una lucha por verdad y por justicia. We celebrate this sentence that ends a long path, almost 18 years of a fight for truth and for justice. For us, this has been a very difficult fight that has exposed us emotionally and publicly. This has taken a huge emotional toll for each one of us. Nonetheless, we are satisfied, because at the end of this long path, we finally had justice, and justice was made on the principal person responsible for the deaths of our loved ones. In Denmark, a Somali man has been charged with two counts of attempted murder after breaking into the home of a Danish artist whose Prophet Muhammad cartoon outraged the Muslim world three years ago. Authorities say the Somali man broke into the house late Friday armed with an axe and a knife. The 74-year-old cartoonist Kurt Vestergaard was not injured in the attack. When he heard someone trying to break into his home, he pressed an alarm and fled to a specially made safe room. His five-year-old granddaughter was also in the house. House at the time. In Indiana, a former Marine has confessed to killing a professor at the University of Indiana named Don Belton. Belton taught English at the school and was the editor of the book Speak My Name, Black Men on Masculinity and the American Dream. Northwestern University professor John Keane said, quote, Belton was a literary pathblazer and one of the important black gay writers to emerge in the 1980s. 25-year-old Michael Griffin has been charged with murder in the killing. Uh, Griffin told police he stabbed Belton because the professor had sexually assaulted him. But according to court documents, a journal found at Belton's house contained a note saying he is, quote, very happy that an individual by the name of Michael has come into his life. The United States has officially lifted a 22-year ban on allowing anyone with HIV or AIDS from entering the country. The new rules go into effect today. The U.S. had been one of just 12 nations that banned visitors with HIV or AIDS.